Um, I've always been kind of a gender opportunist. Um, I grew up with uh, two brothers, and probably the, the best way to explain that would be this one time that these relatives got us all a gift. And my brothers opened theirs right away, and they got these great uh, little snub nose revolver cap guns with the little bullet part that revolved around and the great, like, realistic cap gun sound. And they immediately went, you know, started shooting each other and went running out of the house. And I opened up my box and it was a tea set. <laughs> and my parents were off somewhere and, and at first I decided to just go ahead and follow through with the absurd charade, you know. And it was like the world's most anti-social tea party. It was me, Winnie the Pooh, and two naked baby dolls. And right as I was pouring a little bit of tap water into a cup for one of the naked baby dolls, I, I noticed the way my finger uh, fit into the handle of the cup. And uh, so that's what it's like growing up with two brothers, is uh, shooting at uh, two more well-armed people with a teacup. <laughs> Um, as a gender opportunist, though, I, you know, most of the time I like being a tomboy, but I could also work it the other way. And I, whenever I wanted to, I could, I could be kind of girly, and so I was allowed to cry, I was allowed to be scared, and um, one of my uh, greatest fears was a full-on phobia, and it was a fear of heights. And I don't know if anybody out there has had a fear of heights, but... Um, Basically, one time I was with my family on this observation deck, and that's when I realized that the fear of heights is really a fear of, of the edge and the drop-off. And so when, once I got within two feet of the edge, um, the first thing that happened to me is I wanted to jump off, which scared the hell out of me. It was this weird, strange urge to jump off. And then being so scared from that, all I could do was look down between my feet and make sure the ground was still there and my knees were shaking and I just froze completely. And that's, that's what heights would do to me. Um, fortunately, I grew up in Phoenix, which is pretty flat and everything is kind of one story. Um, so most of the time I was fine. Um, but eventually, when I was 11 years old, my family moved to this new house that had a pool, uh, which was great because immediately uh, my brothers and I uh, started what a friend of mine calls uh, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies approach to the pool. And uh, that means, you know, that we weren't like swimming laps in the pool and like training for the swim team. No, 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 no. Um, we embarked on a series of, of what I like to call uh, physics and chemistry experiments. Uh, the first one was to put um, a uh, grocery cart into the pool and then load all of my older brother's free weights into the grocery cart. And then all three of us would get into the grocery cart to see if that we'd have enough weight so that it would ride on the bottom of the pool, which it would only do for about a foot and a half and then it would go floating off. Um, another thing we like to do, we would get a big piece of lumber that stretched across the whole pool and then all three of us in sync would sort of throw our upper bodies onto this piece of wood and sort of, um, we were creating our own wave pool, like our own breakers in the backyard, basically. We'd get like big two foot waves and we'd splash out about a quarter of the water in the pool. Um, probably the worst idea that somebody had, and I'm still not sure who it was, uh, but one of my brothers probably um, put raw eggs in the pool. And so eventually the water started turning like a darker and darker green until it was actually black. Like creature of the black lagoon, black. You know, like even the cat wasn't drinking out of the pool anymore. My dad had to shock it like six times uh, to get it back to that blue color. Um, but of course, the best thing uh, to do in the pool was something I couldn't do. And the roof of our house basically almost overhanged the pool. Um, so that you just had to clear about mm, a foot and a half, two feet of cement, and you could jump you know, from the roof into the eight foot diving pool, because we used to have diving pools back then. And um, pretty soon everybody but me was doing it. You know, my brothers were doing it, other girls were doing it, little kids were doing it. Um, but every time I tried uh, to climb the ladder to get onto the roof, I would find myself on that top rung of the ladder in that phobic, frozen position, usually with some way younger kid behind me on the ladder yelling at me to hurry up, you know. 
Well, uh, as you might have guessed from our activities in the pool, my older brother was smoking a lot of pot at the time. And uh, so one day he said to me, he said, I said, Molly, we're going to fix this for you. And he handed me this pickle jar that had all these uh, tubes in it. And it was uh, basically the pickle jar bong. Um, and luckily, this was not the day that they decided to put my brother's frogs in the pickle jar bong. Was that, that was a pretty sad day for the frogs. That was actually the last day for the frogs. Um, but so, you know, and I was this good kid. I had never even smoked cigarettes before, but I went ahead and gave gave the pickle jar bong a try. And, you know, my brother said, look, we're going to make it really easy for you. And so I didn't even have to climb the ladder. They had the garbage can set up under the lowest eave of the house. So one of them gave me a boost up, and I climbed up on the garbage can, and then I climbed up on the eave, and then I was in this sort of crouched position for a minute. And then I managed to stand up, and I was okay, and I took a couple of steps, and I was okay. And I headed over towards the edge, and I told my brothers to back off, because one of their favorite things to do if you got near the edge of the roof was to run up to you and shake you while everybody was all wet and slippery, so I told them to back off. And I stood there at the edge, and my knees felt a little weak, but instead of looking at the ground, I looked at the part of the water I wanted to jump into. And I launched off and put my hands above my head, and there was this great splash, and the next thing I know, I was already all the way down at the bottom of the pool and launching back off again, and I was out of the pool, and I was climbing up the garbage can, and I was back on the roof, <laughs> feeling triumphant, like I'd really done something, and then I, I look over at my brothers, you know, waiting for like the pat on the back or something, and then they just sort of looked at me, and they were like, Dude, amateur hour is over. And that's when they rolled out the sheet plastic and got out the liquid dishwashing detergent and then the boogie boards and basically started body surfing head first off of the roof. And I just remember standing there on the roof watching them take this reckless risk. Um, you know, and I was watching my brothers fly and I was thinking to myself, I wish I could be that beautiful. <laughs>